Hi everyone and welcome back to Mountain View Soap. If you're new around here, my name's Hannah. I'm the head soaper and the founder of Mountain View Soap. Today we are making a beach inspired soap that I actually don't have a name for yet, but hopefully by the time this video goes live I will, or it'll just be a random beach soap for the time being until the release. This bar can be purchased on February 6th at 3 p.m. Eastern if you want to get your hands on it. Obviously, you'd probably like to see it first. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually mixing up my lye solution and I'll be mixing up my oil, my base oils as well after. I didn't do this in the first video. Um, when I made the caramel coffee soap, I had everything already mixed out, mainly because I actually found out that I was planning to post this video before that one, but oh well, here we are. <laughs> anyway, so... Basically what I'm just doing is adding some lye into my distilled water and of course wearing gloves for lye safety. And then after I do that, I'm gonna add up my five base oils. My five base oils and butters is shea butter, coconut oil, olive oil, castor oil, and sweet, al sweet almond oil. I almost just said sweet olive oil. So sweet almond oil um, is the fifth. And I try to stay away from palm as much as possible other than in my frosted soaps. I have a specific recipe that I got from Katie um, from Royalty Soaps, and it just creates a beautifully creamy bar. Um, but all of the palm oil that I do get is sustainably sourced and sustainably grown. I'm trying my best to be as sustainable as possible with my business, um, within reason, of course. Shipping with glass is very expensive, so that I'm, you know, trying to not do right now but all of the stuff that I use is something that you could probably use more than just once um anyway that being said I did make the mistake here and I added all of my oils instead of adding in just the stuff that I needed to melt so you'll see a quick clip right here where I'm like oops I'm just gonna skip past this part but I am using this photo right here for reference on everything. Um, I wanted to create a really pretty beach inspired soap. So here I'm, I'm mixing up my colors. The first color I added was Honey Blush. The next color I'm adding is Magic Mushroom. The third color that I'm gonna be adding in is just Winter White and that's just a white mica. I like to use that one instead of um, titanium dioxide because of glycerin reverse. And then I'm also adding in some Laurel Green. I'll use some Blue Tide from Mad Micas and then some Synergy from Nurture Soap. And everything other than the Blue Tide is all from Nurture Soap. The Blue Tide's the only one that's from Mad Micas for anybody wondering. Once I go ahead and put all of these micas in their respective containers, I actually absolutely hate these plastic containers. I, um, since filming this video, got some silicone mixing cups that are way better, obviously better for the environment as well, um, but they're so much nicer and so much easier to use. I'm just going to add a little bit of my base oils to my colors so that it'll all be incorporated in at the end and I don't have to introduce a higher super fat. In a super fat, I use 5%. It just means that there's going to be 5% of the oil left in the soap. And that is what makes it moisturizing and all of that lovely stuff. But I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the first layer. And then you can watch and listen to some nice music for the rest of the layers. I'm going to go ahead and mix up the first layer by measuring out um one fifth, I believe I used one fifth of what my oils and my lye solution were as well as my fragrance. The fragrance that I'm using is coconut lime verbena from Nurture Soap. Um, and then I'm going to add my colorant in, which is just the darker version of the honey blush mica. So it's honey blush and the little bit of magic mushroom. Stir that together and then I'm going to pour it in the molds. Once I poured in the molds, because I soaked at such a low temperature, I think this was at the time one of the lowest temperatures that I've, I had ever soaked at. And with soaping, something really interesting that I didn't fully realize until I just filmed two videos today, soaping at an even cooler temperature than I did this one, it really has an effect on the soap's trace. Like, if you soap very warm, your soap is going to get harder much quicker. Um, when you soap at more of like a room temperature or something less than room temperature, 
um, like say 60 degrees, which is what I soaked at today because it's cold in here and stuff like that. It really slows everything down. Um, I'm also watching New Girl on Netflix. If you guys haven't seen it, this is my second time watching everything through. I absolutely love it. It's a great show. Highly recommend. Um, so, like I said, I'm just going to go ahead and pour into my molds. I apologize. Again, the whole camera angle kind of sucks here. But working on it, May can't come fast enough when we move, hopefully. And then after this, tap them all down, clean up the sides, and then I'm going to texture the top just a little bit so there's a little tiny bit of texture once I cut the bars. And once that's done, we're just going to continue to repeat this process over and over and over again. So I'm going to put on some nice music and you guys can watch the rest of the soap be made.
because at this moment in time, I realized that I majorly messed up. Um, I did not wait for the second to last layer to set because I had been making the soap for so long. The one thing that I didn't mention when I started was this technique takes so long because you have to wait for each layer to set up between that and pouring the next one. I did that today with the honey soap that you guys will see next week. I waited for each layer to set before pouring and it just it takes so much time see like my fingers I'm like okay come on let's go and then I just kind of got sick of it and I'm like okay whatever we're just gonna make this work because I don't have the time to sit here and wait and then the other thing too is this last bit of soap just set up really really quickly and I think it was because I ended up stick blending too much too soon and I just kind of was like all right we're just gonna have to make it work um, in the end, when you see the cut bar, I'm not 100% happy with the way this turned out, but it actually wasn't because of this mess up. It was mainly because I was not happy with how much white I used, which I mentioned in the caramel coffee video. If you haven't seen that one, click the card in the right hand side on the top and you can go check that out after this one. Um, basically, this is me just texturing the top, trying to make it look a little bit more like waves, a little more beachy. Um, I also add a little bit of um, titanium dioxide on the top to kind of make it look a little bit more like waves. And then finally, um, I was like, okay, well, this kind of looks plain to me. Of course, I had um, been planning to make the caramel coffee soap, which is obviously a lot more intense than what this one is in terms of the frosting and stuff. So I was like, okay, you know, I wanted to look a little bit more, you know, fancy. And I decided to add some sea salt. And I believe this is like an organic sea salt from somewhere. I'm not sure. But I added a little bit of that in. Um, and then I will show you a really quick up close look before we cut the bars. Here's a really quick up close look at what the soap looked like in the mold before I popped it into the freezer. This was before I actually found the new way of how I cure my bars, which is just putting it in front of a fan. Super simple, super easy, and they don't gel, which is awesome. But this is how the bar looks like. It lightened up a lot, and the other thing too, I struggled with bubbles a little bit. But you can see here, the colors aren't as vibrant as what I was hoping for. Um, and also I used a lot of white which kind of contributed to that. So it doesn't look exactly like the, t the picture but it does give me beachy vibes and it smells absolutely amazing. So as even though it didn't come out the way that I had originally intended it, it does still look good and it smells. So if you're looking for a soap that smells like you're sitting on the beach with some happy pina colada drink, just waiting for that sun to you know come out with that ocean breeze and all of that jazz then this is definitely the bar that you're going to want to check out again you can grab this bar on february 6th at 3 p.m eastern along with the caramel coffee soap the honey soap that i made today which you will see next week and another few collections that i'm not going to spoil just yet i will have wax melt again and i will have two other collections which if you purchase in November, then you know I am launching scrubs, whipped body scrubs, which are so beautiful and they are amazing on the skin, but I'm not going to spoil anything else. So until the next video, I hope you are as excited to get your hands on this bar as I was to make it because it smells so good. But until the next video, I will see you guys next week.